Hi, my name is Jamie. I'm going to take you through a hip series. So in a hip series, we're going to move the hips in six directions, and I'd recommend having a block and a strap nearby. So we'll start resting on your back and have the strap within, within reach. So you'll start with both your legs bent and straighten your right leg up towards the ceiling. And you can go ahead and interlace your right, your hands behind your right thigh. And you can stay here for the stretch, or you can take your strap and place it around the ball of your right foot. Make sure that your right leg is straight and press into the ball of the foot into the strap to engage the front of the right thigh. Go ahead and grab the strap with each hand so that you're not holding too much tension in your neck and your shoulders. You can always bend the elbows and bring the arms down to either side of the body. You can straighten your left leg out along the ground, or if you prefer to keep your left knee bent and foot on the floor, that is also an option. Connect with your breath here. And do your best if your legs are straight to press them as straight as they can go. If the stretch is too intense and you're not able to take a deep breath, consider moving your right foot a little bit more away from you, so back away from the stretch. The stretch will be felt on the back of the right leg. Go ahead and release your top foot and bend your bottom leg and come on out. And then we'll go to the other side. So take the strap onto your left foot and take the strap on the ball of the foot so that you're able to press into the strap to help straighten your left knee. Again, you can straighten your right leg along the ground. And make sure the straps in each hand, you can either bend the elbows and place the arms on either side of the torso, or keep the arms straight and reach your hands up towards your foot. Again, notice your breath and make sure that you can still breathe deeply and calmly and that the stretch is felt on the back of the left leg. Direct your breath into your belly and press both your legs as straight as they can go. The stretch is too intense and you're not able to breathe calmly and deeply. Go ahead and move your left foot away from you. Then bend your right knee, release your left foot from the strap. And just notice the difference in your hips after doing a hamstring stretch. This next stretch will be stretching the inner thigh. So you're going to take a strap around your right foot again. And this time take both straps into your right hand. So start with your right leg straight. And with your left leg, you can either keep the knee bent or straighten the left leg along the ground. Take your left hand to the front of your left hip to keep your left hip down towards the ground as you move your right leg out to the right. Try to avoid tipping. That's very common in this pose. So really do your best to press your right foot into the strap to help, help keep your left hip down on the ground. Make sure that your pelvis stays steady in this pose. You can bend your right elbow or you can reach your right hand more towards your foot and keep your right elbow straight. Keep your breath flowing in and out through your nose. And the stretch will be felt on the right inner thigh. Then slowly bend your left knee, bring your right foot back to center and release it from the strap. And now we'll go to the other side. So lasso your left foot with a strap. Take both straps into your left hand. You can keep your right knee bent or extend your right knee along the ground. Take your right hand to the front of your right hip. Keep your right hip down towards the ground as you bring your left leg out to the left. Breathe. Keep both legs straight. Try to let your breath move calm and deep in and out through your nose. 
and the stretch will be felt on the left inner thigh. And then go ahead and bend your right knee. Bring your left foot back to center and release your foot from the strap. So the next one we're going to do is stretching the outside of the hip. So you're going to bring the strap to your right foot again. And this time take both straps into your left hand. You're going to take your right hand to the crease of your right hip. And you're going to move your right foot in line with your left shoulder. With your right hand, you're going to push your right hip towards the end of your yoga mat. You can keep your left knee bent or straighten your left leg out. Breathe. Calm and deep through your nose. The stretch will be felt on the outside of the right leg, possibly into the calf. If this stretch is too intense and you're not able to breathe deeply enough through your nose, consider moving your foot a little bit more away from you. If you're not feeling a stretch, consider pulling your right foot towards your left shoulder more. Then slowly bend your bottom knee, bring your top foot back to center, and come on out. We'll do it on the left side, so left side of your left foot with a strap. Take both straps into your right hand, and take your left hand to the crease of your left hip. Bring your left foot in line with your right shoulder. As you push your left hip down towards the end of your mat, you can straighten your right leg out along the mat, and breathe. Let the breath move into your belly. If the stretch is too intense, consider moving your foot a little bit more away from you. If you want more of a stretch, consider pulling your right foot, your left foot towards your right shoulder. Bend your right knee. Bring your left foot back to center and come on up. So the next two that we're gonna do are gonna be rotational stretches. So this is where a block might be helpful. So consider grabbing a block and having it nearby if needed. So you're gonna cross your left ankle over your right knee and you're gonna walk your right foot off your yoga mat to the right. Both sets of feet are gonna pull up towards the shins. So this is called dorsiflexion in the foot. So you're going to flex your foot and then bring your right knee down towards the ground, inside of the right knee down, and the outside of the left knee down towards the ground. So go ahead and look and make sure that your femur, your thigh bone, is in line with the long edge of your mat and your shin is in line with the short edge of your mat. This is where a block might be helpful to put underneath your knee if you're feeling any pressure in your knee. So if you're going to use the block, the block will go underneath the right knee and then just remove your left foot. You can keep your arms under your sides or reach your arms overhead. And this might increase the stretch. The goal is not necessarily to get your right knee down towards the ground. It's more to create space and length in your hip so even creating more space between the pelvis and the rib cage here. And reaching your knee towards one end of the mat as you reach your arms towards the other end of the mat. The stretch usually is felt on the outside of the hip. It can also be felt in the front of the right hip. If the stretch is felt in the knee, consider maybe moving the block up to a higher setting so there's not as much pressure on the knee joint. This is internal rotation that we're doing, which means we're stretching our external rotators. Make sure you're keeping your feet active here. And then come back up to center, bring your knees back up, walk your right foot in. And if you used a block on the right side, consider using it also on the left side. 
So you're going to cross your right ankle over your left knee. Rock your left foot off the yoga mat to the left. And then let your left hip come up off the ground and try to bring the left knee in the direction of the ground and the right knee in the direction of the ground. Look down and make sure that your thigh is in line with the short or long edge of your mat and your shin is in line with the short edge of your mat. So your knee is at 90 degrees. If this is too much pressure on the knee, consider removing your top foot off your knee. If you are going to keep your top foot on the thigh, use your top foot to help you reach your knee longer as you maybe reach your arms up overhead. It's also possible that you might not feel a lot in the stretch, but it still has benefits of moving your hip into internal rotation. So even if there's not a strong stretch, you're still receiving benefits from doing this pose. Keep your feet active. And then slowly come on out. Walk your left foot in. And then release. This next one, a block, can also be handy for two. So you're going to cross your right ankle over your left knee. And you're going to walk your left foot to the right side of your yoga mat. You're going to try to open your left knee towards the ground and try to open your right knee towards your left foot. So this is not my favorite pose. This is the one I struggle with the most. But in this particular pose, keep your feet active. And the stretch might be felt more in your groin area, possibly even your outer hips. To use a block in this pose, if you notice that your pelvis is getting really pulled out of alignment, consider taking the block and placing it underneath your left thigh to allow your right knee to open up a little bit more. Do your best to breathe and to let your legs relax, let them open. You can also reach your arms overhead if that feels comfortable for you. And then go ahead and slowly come out. Walk your left foot back underneath your left knee. And release. So do this on the other side. So cross your left ankle over your right knee. And walk your right foot over to the left side of your yoga mat. Make both your feet active by pulling the toes up towards the shin. So dorsiflex the feet. And again, if you used a block, on the other side, consider using it also on this side. So place the block underneath your right hip. And do your best to try to open your left knee towards your right foot and allow your right knee to move towards the ground. Your arms can reach up overhead. And breathe into your belly. And let your legs relax, let your knees get heavy. So this is external rotation, which means we're stretching our internal rotators. And then go ahead and walk your right foot back underneath your right knee. And come on up. So this last stretch is going to be to the front of the thigh. And it's going to be done in a kneeling position. So roll over onto your side and come up to a kneeling position. And again, this might be where a block might be handy. So you're going to have your left foot come forward into a low lunge. And you're going to place the block behind you by your shin. I like to have the block on the medium setting, you can also have it on a low setting. If it's on the highest setting, con consider taking two blocks instead of just balancing on one block. So you're going to keep your left foot on the ground as you slowly lower your hips towards the block. So you're going to sit on the block 
and make sure that your right knee points straight ahead. Bring your hands behind you, and with your left foot, press down and lift your bottom up, and scoop your bottom underneath as you lower it back down to the block. So your knee points straight ahead, and you'll get a stretch to the front of your right thigh. And breathe. Consider also, you can lower the block a little bit more if it feels like you can go a little bit further in the pose. So once you lift your bottom up and scoop your bottom underneath, then lower your hips back down so you're not having to do a lot of work in this particular pose. It's also possible that some of us could just remove the block completely and sit our bottom down to the ground. And breathe. When coming out of this pose, I recommend coming out forward. So come out the same way you came in. So step forward and then change to the other side. So bring your right foot into a low lunge, the right foot forward, left knees on the ground. Again, if you used a block on one side, consider using it on the other. And then walking your hands back and slowly lowering your sit bones to the block. Bring your hands back behind you. Lift your bottom up, making sure that your left knee points straight ahead and stays on the ground, and scoop your bottom underneath. So this stretch will be felt right in the front of the left thigh, and breathe. Maybe consider lowering the block. And maybe lift the hips back up and just scoop one more time. So pulling the pelvis into posterior tilt by scooping your bum underneath you helps you stretch out the front of your thighs. So we're stretching out our hip flexors and our quads. And breathe. Again, if this feels like you might not need the block, Listen to your body, listen to your knee especially. So if your knee's uncomfortable at any point, go ahead and back away. And again, if you do move the block setting, consider re-scooping, re-tucking the pelvis underneath. And breathe. And then slowly come out of the pose the same way you came in by walking forward. And then go ahead and release. So this concludes the hip series. If you have any questions, please contact me. Otherwise, I hope your hips are feeling more open and happier. Thank you.